Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Oh, Marshall, how are you again? Oh, I'm fantastic, sir. Um, I forgot why we're here. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. You are clever. Well, let me remind you, um, we're talking about Plato's uh, universal leadership qualities that he lists out over uh, two or three pages in the Republic. And uh, we, we just finished, you know, we, we, we talked originally about these three qualities that made you uh, good and solid. Um, and then uh, last week we talked about, uh, you know, sort of having a, a natural talent for, for studies, for learning, being sharp and quick at learning. And, and we're, we're not done because um, you can't just be sharp and quick at learning, but you have to be prepared to complete that long course of learning, that, that intellectual study that you're going to have to do to be a good leader, according to uh, Plato and, and uh, theoretically his mentor Socrates, who is the, the voice in all of this. And today's about memory. So the fact that you forgot is almost like you remembered to make a joke about memory. That's great. Right there shows you the, the depth of my intellect. Right. Yes. Yes, it's about this much. Yeah. The, so <laughs> that's so this not is, true. What that's I, not true. What I think is interesting about this is that Plato leaves this somewhat vague in the yeah. Republic. So yeah. so and not that I've read it, but the excerpts that you read to me. The uh and and what it does is it, it prompts a discussion of you know what does memory mean to you why is yeah. it important as a as a characteristic of leadership and it, and it leads to all the things that 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 they would hope you would do which is to stop and think and, and dive a little bit deeper in it have a discussion figure it out for yourself and go forward yeah so y- y- you don't know how how accurate you are about that because defining your terms um is is basically what you just said you know what do you mean by a good memory and, and that's, I would argue, part of grammar. Um, there's another part uh, in, in the Republic where he's sort of listing out the specific coursework, if you will, that these uh, philosopher kings and guardians would go through. And, and the education is basically the seven liberal arts. Uh, there are three, uh, there, excuse me, there are four that are mathematical and, and numeric related and three that are verbal, um, the language arts, and they start with grammar. And, and grammar is, is that idea of, you know, you, you think primarily about letters and punctuation and uh, sentence structure. Um, you know, used to elementary schools were called grammar schools, right? Um, so we're, we're not too far past this in our day and age. But, um, but the idea is that there could be a, a, a bit of a grammar for anything, right? So um, with, with hip socket, my business, you know, I, I tell people wrestle and grow more organized, uh, confident, and influential. And the organized part there is getting organized in your knowledge. That, that's really what it's about is, is internalizing some, some good knowledge that you can then take and, and use. So I, I, think, I think that what you said is, is spot on from my understanding of the fact that we have to sort of internalize a grammar about what we're talking about. What do we mean? What do all these words mean? How do they work together? If we don't have that, in our field of study and and uh, in our in our organizations, then boy, it's going to be hard to get off the starting block. Oh, definitely. So one of the things that's always interesting is is that the when we work in uh, the the automotive space, the the retail automotive space that we're in, uh, sometimes there's a tremendous amount of turnover. Yep. And and we end up because we have a long term relationship with the with the with the organization. Yeah. Even though there's there's turnover within the organization, sometimes we become what I call the corporate memory. Yes, yes. And so the, you know, people will come up with an idea. You know, we could try this new marketing thing, or we could do this. And I'm the only one in the room that recalls when the last time we did it and how it turned out. <laughs> right. right? What were the wins? What were yep. the landmines the previous group stepped on and got blown to bits? Yep. <laughs> and so. But I'm the only one in the room who knows. Yeah, and it's this, it's this lack of memory right. that sometimes holds the organization back. Yeah, sometimes it's a benefit because what they don't know, they're, they're more fearless to, to go after. 
uh, but they run the risk of repeating the mistakes uh, yeah. of the, the the previous group who tried the same thing in this in the same facility with the same customers and, and, it, and it just did not resonate yeah and, and so yeah you sit there and you and you, you, know, you kind of you know, wonder okay when is it appropriate for me to say hey i've i've got some ideas of and uh, let me share with you some stories of what happened when this was tried previously right and, and here's some things that we could learn going forward from that well, and you've talked to me in the past about um, almost the, the counter example where um, some of these leaders have such amazing memories of their people, uh, the, you know, the, the, the numbers for the months, uh, the performance and uh, vendor relationships and uh, just all sorts of different things that um, basically just having that at their disposal and at recall, you know, whenever they need it, um, just really allows them to be incredibly productive in their organizations and effective, I guess I should say. Oh, yeah. No, I'm always, I'm always marveling at, yeah, they'll just rattle these things off. And of course, that, that provides them with the ability to think things through in the context of what right. they already have experienced. Right. And, and so, yeah, we, I know this, I remember this. And therefore, that's going to influence whatever happens next. Yeah. And, and, and I, so what's so funny about this is that, you know, you, you started by talking about, you know, he left, Plato leaves this vague so that you could have a discussion about it. Well, you can't really have the discussion until you've, you've had that discussion about what it actually means, right? What, you know, what's, what's the knowledge that we're then going to gain understanding of? And that sounds kind of high and mighty. Let, let me give a, uh, a historic example, and then maybe we can talk about you know where we see this show up in the organization. Um, the the Greeks, I, I think the Greeks and the Romans both would have em, employed uh, the grammaticus as sort of like stage two of education. Like at, at home, you'd learn your letters, and I, I think you'd learn um, uh, maybe maybe like uh, some epic poetry, some Homer. Um, and then you'd be sent to a grammaticus and he would really drill some things into you about, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, um, taking that, uh, that literature, that poetry a step further and internalizing it even more and, and uh, uh, maybe even sort of uh, 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 pulling out, uh, uh, I'm, this is hilarious because I'm having trouble with my memory on words that would apply here, but basically uh, taking that and uh, unpacking it, taking all that literature and, and art and unpacking it. And that they wouldn't really care how you felt, you know, like the, the grammaticus would just kind of drill this into you and, and further build up your grammar uh, on that particular set of subjects, mainly language, like I said, and literature. Um, but then you would be allowed to go and have the real discussions, to, to have, uh, you know, to, to engage in, in dialogue, to engage in dialectic, the other, the, the next of the language arts, so that you could really bat that around. And, um, you know, what, what I would say is you got organized in your knowledge. Now you're getting confident in your understanding of that knowledge because you've got so much of it internalized. So there's a historical example of what this would look like is you'd really have to just work at getting that in it's not necessarily fun per se but but you you want to get that internalized so that you can then go have those conversations uh to, to grow understanding for you and for the team mm -hmm. well and i see this so so i will share a concept with the leader right here's here's the theoretical idea behind this concept and then it might be months later right and they'll look at you and they'll go so this relates to that book you told me about, Dan Pink's Drive, and this yeah. is the mastery part of that. Right. And you'll go, whoa. whoa. Yes, that is the application <laughs> of the idea that we discussed many months right. ago. And so they've, they've retained it. And at some point it became applicable and they had that recall. Yeah. And so I always just, I just marvel at that because sometimes they'll, they'll repeat it back and I'll go, did I talk about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that did, yeah, yeah, I was the one who brought that to you. Yes, I think it was me. So, 
so but but that ability to to take you know and we see it with with you know the walk a mile in my shoes uh -huh. and so we see great leaders who've worked their way up through the organization and they'll then they can vividly remember they have the memory of being a salesperson on the sales floor who was one car away from 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 getting to the bonus level yeah or yeah. from being that manager who was struggling to to build a team uh you know in their department and so the ones who never lose that memory uh right. more empathetic uh better able to relate better able to to lift up and take with them uh, those people and, and and you find that those people relate more to the leader right right he yeah. he was in the wash bay washing cars this guy was was selling just like i was selling at one point he gets me and, and therefore i get him and, and i want to i want to go wherever this is going to take us yeah I, and what's so funny about that and I, i'm, I'm going to back up because i looked up my my reference while you were talking and um the grammaticus would have been you know helping you even read aloud some of this literature and uh, unpacking what words meant and the origins that they came from and um you know uh, explaining what you're what you're reading get just studying it really studying that that thing that you're trying to internalize and why that's so important to what you just said is because you know that leader has his heart in it right and so we, we've got an expression about memory that way right that i learned it by heart mm -hmm. there, there's something where it's it's internalized not on a just a purely intellectual level but it does drop to your heart and it becomes something that you're kind of you know you, you've got an emotional attachment to your your um you know it's just just like my wife right i love her and i and i just know things about her that other people don't and you maybe wouldn't even be interested right it'd be boring to you but i'm just learning all these things um, and frankly, I like to talk about them, right? I mean, I, I know it, it, you don't want to sit around and listen to a guy talk about his wife all the time, but at the same time, I like it. Uh, and, and there's something in there about helping me internalize it and even express it back out loud that um, I think C.S. Lewis says that that, uh, that praise is like the, uh, the, the climax or the consummation of love to, to, to be able to talk about it. We just naturally praise things. Well, we don't praise it unless we know it, right? So um, where I'm going with that is the, again, another Greek concept here, the, uh, the goddess memory was the mother of the ancient muses, these, these uh, sort of minor, I guess, minor goddesses. Uh, um, I can't remember if they were goddesses or not, but uh, they were the inspiration for all poetry and music and all, all the arts, right? There were, there were nine muses um, who inspired all artists, but it started with memory, right? It started with something that got internalized. And that's, uh, you know, I, I think back to these leaders that you're amazed by that, that can recall all this stuff and the leaders you're mentioning that, you know, work their way up and have, have internalized, you know, what it's like, they remember what it was like to be in those roles. And that's a powerful part of, uh, you know, you're, you're bringing all of that forward, all of that memory forward and doing some art with it. You really are. I mean, I, the, our, our best entrepreneurs, our best managers are artists. They would be, most of mine, completely uncomfortable with the word choice I just used, but that's what they're doing. They're making something amazing. And for anybody who's stopping long enough to pay attention, it's a thing of beauty. It really is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, we're, we're men living in the Midwest, we can't really talk about our hearts. <laughs> right. So we have a different phrase in the Midwest, right? We look at somebody and go, you know, that boy's ate up with it. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. to be ate up with it, uh, right, yes. is, is to take it to heart is, yeah. is to, is to be wildly curious to want to know everything, and, and to have all that information. Uh, so that then they can apply it to whatever it comes next. Yeah. And so, yeah. so if you're going to be, a, you know, maybe, you know, if Plato was writing it now, he would write, you know, one of the eight characteristics is to be ate up with whatever you're doing. I love that. <laughs> and, and I think you're, I think you're really correct about that. And it's making me think of Simon Sinek's start with why, right? You, you know, you, you find something about it that just is an absolute turn on and all your action flows out of that. For, for me, you know, HipSocket talks about you're organized in your knowledge and you're confident in, un, in your understanding of that knowledge. You, you've gone, you not only internalize it, but you've had a conversation about it. 
now you can go be influential and have some wisdom that you, you know, share with, with your world and, and uh, have an impact. I mean, you know, genuinely have a, a, a good impact uh, on those around you, uh, which is, you know, you're going to make more money, but man, this is going to be way more fulfilling than just uh, success, quote unquote, in the business world or, or you know, wh wherever you put that. Mm -hmm. But it's going to start with that love. Oh, definitely, definitely. An example in my life. So, so I'm watching a movie, right? And I'm watching the movie, and there's a scene, and and I immediately go, "Oh, that would be so good," and really makes a great point about this leadership topic. I need. Yeah, to you're good at this. You are great. Right, right. I'm like, oh, you know. So I mean, you know, and 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 then the wife's like, "Are you working?" <laughs> well, I'm, I might be working, but no, I'm watching this movie, but yeah, no, I'm 100% thinking, okay, you know, how can I apply this to, you yeah. know, to help a team, uh, to help an organization? And, and so that, that goes back to, to you know, I, I've, I've got to capture that in my memory. So when right. the time comes, I'll have recall of that and be able to apply it in the situation where it's most powerful. My, my version of that is mom on Sundays when we are supposed to have a, a day at rest, you know, it's Sunday lunch and my dad and I will get going. You, you two stop it. Stop it right now. No more work talk. Yeah, I get that. But we love it. We love right. it. Right. We're, right. we're right up with it. Yeah. And we, we know the more that we have stored, right. uh, the more effective we can be to, to, to helping organizations get to a better place. So, so if you can tap into the thing about this that you love or spend enough time with it that you start to internalize some love for it, your life gets better. Um, the, the, the Simon Sinek common, uh, uh, concept of starting with why is a big part of this. To wrap up, let me just add that this is the first of three quick elements that Plato gives us that are about being prepared to complete this long course of intellectual study. So, so this is one of three. We'll come back and, and you'll see how these concepts overlap a little bit, uh, but we'll cover uh, two more in future episodes. And, and uh, then we've got one more eighth characteristic to wrap this whole thing up with. So stay with us. We're having a blast. Yeah, yeah. be tenacious. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's in, in the literary word, we call that foreshadowing. <laughs> Very excited to be using that. Uh, the, grammar. Uh, all right, let's see uh, how impressed our announcer is uh, with our musings. <laughs> Stinks. Shame on you. <laughs> and that's it. Join us next time when you'll hear Mike say, well, I'm sure he'll say something pithy. Don't miss it. Next time, it doesn't take a genius.